What's going on guys? Welcome to Praska Boys Garage and on this episode you can see the new project is already on the table behind me. It is an SSR 125cc dirt bike and I plan to completely restore the entire thing. And what that means is I'm going to tear down everything, go through every single component and either fix, replace, or refinish, get it back together so it's as if you drove it right off the showroom floor. Now we're going to have some fun with it. I haven't quite picked out the colors and ideas yet, but we will uh, explore those options as we go through this project. So the first things first, I need to get this thing off the table, get it pressure washed, bring it back so we can inspect it and see what's going on. Thanks for watching and uh, let's get started. Now that the dirt bike is pressure washed off, I can go through it and start making a parts list in order to complete this restoration. Now for starters, the guy that I got the dirt bike from, he went ahead and started this project. He ordered a new exhaust, ordered a new uh, carburetor. He says it was a running dirt bike, but the gas tank actually had a leak in it. He ordered a replacement gas tank and it ended up being the wrong size and he slowly got discouraged from finishing it itself. That's where we stepped in. I bought the dirt bike. I had all the stuff that he got, both the gas tanks, plastics, chain and side cover. We're gonna go ahead and use some of the stuff, but for the majority, it's gonna be new that we want to do. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and break down this entire dirt bike. I'm gonna get the motor off first, put that in the stand and start breaking down every single component to get ready for powder coating. All right, as you can see on the table, it is completely torn apart. And I will tell you, it was so much easier than all the ATVs I've done in the past. I actually forgot how simple it is to tear one of these things apart. Now, the next step in my process is to start the powder coating uh, prep work. There is a few things that I have to do on the frame, a few tabs that are broke off that I'm going to clean up and get ready before we take it over to the powder coating shop. Now, I also am replacing quite a few parts in this thing. And let's talk about those right over here. All right, now right on the table, you will see all the parts necessary in order to finish this build. Now, VMC Chinese Parts actually sent me what I still needed in order to get it completed. Now, VMC Chinese Parts, they are a company that I've personally been using for years for all of my rebuild projects. I'll make sure to put a link to their website in the description below, as well as a link to all the parts needed in order to get this thing finished up. Now, let's hop back on the dirt bike, get this thing metal prepped and ready for powder coating. All right, well that does it for me on the powder coat prep. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this stuff in the back of the car. I'll pick you guys back up on our way to the shop tomorrow. All right, we just made it to rim right. Let's get some powder coating done. All right, now here's an update with what I've got done on powder coating so far. We went ahead and started sandblasting the majority of the parts, the handlebars, the rear control arms, the risers, everything is already done, but I got a few things left still to do. Now the front forks need to be blasted and the new wheels also still need to be blasted and the frame itself will actually end up getting dunked and stripped before going in for final powder coat. So a good day today, we got a lot of work done. We'll finish this and wrap this whole thing up back tomorrow. So for the plan guys, in this first row, you'll see everything is gonna be white. In the second row, we're gonna make everything black and the rims we are gonna do in race red. So I'm super excited for how this thing's gonna turn out. I cannot wait to see it and I'll pick you guys up back when we get started putting powder on.
All right, guys, so next up on my list, I'm gonna start attacking this motor. Now, what I wanna do is double check the compression. The guy did say that it was running at one time, but it hasn't ran for a while. So before I go ahead and get it cleaned up and painted, I wanna make sure that it's a healthy motor. So what we're gonna do is remove the spark plug. That absolutely is gonna to need to be changed. And let's check for oil. You can see, as you can see, it's not that bad. Yep, and it's perfect. So that's good. We're good on oil. All right, so now that we know we have good oil and it is at the right level within the crankcase, we remove the spark plug. One last thing I want to do before I check compression is actually remove the carburetor. Uh, since I don't have a throttle cable to open it all the way up during the check, uh, we're just going to take it off for now. Okay, so since the motor is not electric start, I'm going to go ahead and put a 14 millimeter socket on this power drill to be able to turn this over so we can check the compression. And let's see what we got. Woo! <laughs> it's pulling about 140. Let's go ahead and give her one more shot. About 140. Yeah, that is a good, healthy motor. Let's get this thing prepped and ready for paint. You can tell it's definitely been a while since that's been cleaned, if not ever. Man, that's bad. Good thing we're going to be cleaning all that and replacing everything. All right, it's a 17 millimeter on the bottom. Let's get this oil drained out. Because the next thing I'm going to do is tape off this intake, and we're going to take it over to the pressure washer and pressure wash the whole thing off. After I get done pressure washing it, back on the stand it goes. We're going to take a wire wheel and start taking off all this old paint before we get ready for the new engine paint going on. Now off camera, I did take a few minutes to clean up a few extra paint spots just to make sure that I got the majority of it off before we started painting. And what I did was I actually took some paint remover, I sprayed it on, I waited a few minutes, then took the pressure washer again and pressure washed it off. So it's not 100% complete, but it's good enough for me and what I'm trying to accomplish. So next up, I'm gonna get this thing prepared to start painting. Now on the table you will see all the plastics we're using on the dirt bike as well as the decal kit I had ordered to put on. Now the decals, they're actually quite a bit larger than the plastics themselves, so I'm gonna have to stick them on and then actually cut them to make them look appropriate. Now I'm not the best sticker layer in the world, so I'm just gonna do my best uh, taking my time using soap and water and a squeegee and seeing if I can't get these things to lay down and at least look pretty decent. Man, I gotta say, I've been in the shop since 9 a.m. It's now 5 p.m. and this is what I've accomplished. 
stickers, and painting a motor. It doesn't seem like a lot, but I'm going to tell you, it takes a lot of patience to do both of those two jobs, and it's very meticulous work. I'm super happy with how it turned out. This is exactly the look I was going for, black, red, and white, the same as the powder coating for the bike. So this thing is going to look awesome. So everything is done plastic wise. I pulled the grips up to match and that motor is looking murdered out. I cannot wait for final assembly. So coming up, I'll get all the parts from powder coat back on the table and start the process of putting it all back together. Man, I'm gonna tell you what, there is nothing better than fresh powder coating on a project. This thing looks absolutely amazing. Special thank you to Dan and Pat over at Rimrite. You guys did an outstanding job getting this thing ready for the channel. Now, I'm gonna get started assembling it today. I'm actually super nervous. I don't wanna scratch anything. It looks so good. I'm gonna start with those wheels and tires. Well, only because I have the most patience in the morning and I really don't wanna scratch or ding them as I'm putting those tires on. So let's get started on that and assembling this project. Well, after all that, um, I'm beat. I'm beat, and this is why. tube has a hole in it. So all put together, it took me half hour, a lot of struggling. Okay, let's move on to something else because I'm going to have to order a new tube and uh, we'll come back to it later. All right, well, I had the bright idea that I would take the old tube out of the dirt bike and so I went over to put some air in it and... Well, that one has a leak too, so that will not work. I'm gonna have to order a new tube. So as far as I'm concerned, this is garbage. This is trash. I'm done with my pity party. Let's move on to putting this frame together. Well, I will tell you, this has got me in a much better mood. It looks so good getting all put together. That color scheme is going to go perfectly with the decals we picked out, and uh, I could not be happier. Now, the deal with the shock is it has a cap on the end, so I couldn't actually fit it the other way. So I turned it upside down. Not a big deal. It's going to function and ride just like normal. So what I'm going to do next, I'm still working on the forks in the front end. I'm going to grab the forks. I got new seals. I'm going to get all the put together, put new fork oil in. That way we can check the forks off the list. All right, well, I'm taking a quick pause because that was not easy. Holy cow, that took a long time. Time lapse, you don't even know. <laughs> uh, I got the seals in. Uh, those were uh, challenging themselves, uh, but then getting everything put together for the fork. Also, the dust protector. I'm not sure how much I like it against the frame. Uh, however, I'm going to put it all together still and kind of see from a distance with the plastics and everything if we're going to keep them or not. So for now, they stay. I'm halfway done. Let's get the other one finished up.
can we just take a moment to look at this thing? <laughs> it looks so good. Now I had to take a second and put the plastics on. Let me take a step back for you guys, just to kind of get the full picture. I got the handlebars on and this thing is looking amazing. Now I didn't conquer the wheels and tires today. I'm gonna pick those up as soon as the new inner tube comes in and uh, we're gonna get this thing put back together one piece at a time. So for right now, I'm just gonna enjoy this moment and let's get back to work. All right, guys, well, the new inner tubes are in. I did buy two of them because I don't want to sit here and wait in case we pop it again. So let's go back on the tires and see if we can't get these things mounted. Well, Misery does love company, and I'm going to say the front wheel felt like it was left out from the rear wheel. And I say that because, well, I popped yet another tube. And not just the original one I bought, I also took the front tube out of the old tire, which actually still held air. I put that in. I got from here all the way around to here. I took too big of a bite with the spoon, and I popped the second tube. So I am not having any luck. Fortunately, Amazon Prime does ship out in two days. So I have two more tubes, two more tries to get this front wheel checked off our list. Let's give it a shot. All right, now let's talk about what's going on with the front wheel. I opted to go with hydraulic brakes rather than the mechanical brakes that it came with. We got a different wheel, different sprocket, and a different brake caliper itself. Now the issue really is that the caliper I ordered, well, it happens to be about one inch short. I didn't grab the right size, my math was off. I'm gonna have to replace that with a different one. Also the spacing, because we went with a different wheel, the spacers that it came with are not set exactly for this wheel size. So I'm gonna run to the hardware store, see if I can grab some more spacers and make this thing fit perfect before we move on to that back wheel. All right, we are back from the hardware store. I grabbed some metal bushings that are gonna get cut up and we'll use those for spacers, get this wheel lined up exactly where it needs to go. All right, guys, well, that went according to plan. I used metal bushings, and as you can see, I chopped them up. They fit in perfectly, and it put that brake disc exactly where it needs to go, right in between those brake pads. Now, I'm not 100% done with this front wheel yet. You will notice I didn't tell Powder Coat that they needed to do the inside of these wheels also because they were going to be open. Uh, I'll go ahead and hit those with the gloss black just to clean that up. Also, the brake disc itself was 190 millimeters. It is too small, so I put an order in for a 220 millimeter today. That should give us the room we need to get these brakes finished up. So for now, I am satisfied with what we've gotten done. Let's move towards the rear wheel. Well, I'm not gonna act surprised. This bike's been one big learning experience and this rear wheel is giving me a little bit of trouble. 
because when I got this thing, the back brake had already been removed, so I'm not sure what exactly they had going on, but I'm having some difficulty trying to figure out the spacing. Now, you can see on this side, there's a spacer here, and there is a small spacer right there, and I know those are the correct spacers because of the wear marks they had sitting inside the rubber hub. So I know I've got them in the right place. The issue I'm running into now is that this brake caliper's on, the brackets lined up, if you can see that, that's free on that piece and that welding is right there. So it was never designed to go all the way to the right. So I am assuming there should be one more spacer right here, but I didn't take one off. I'm gonna guess that it got lost when he took the brake, the old brake caliper off, who knows? So next up, I'm gonna go ahead and try and fit another spacer yet again in this back tire and see if I can't get this thing all to line up perfectly with the new brakes. All right, guys, it's looking good, but we're not quite out of the woods just yet. Now, the spacing itself, spot on accurate. As you can see, that spacer fit in there perfectly. With the uh, disc brake itself, you can see in between the pads, loving how that looks. The issue that we're having, I bought these new studs to hold on this disc, and as it turns, it rubs right, right just there right there. So they're a little too long for what I need it to be for this thing to free spin. So each one of these is going to come off individually. I'm going to grind them down just about to that thread line and then put them back in and make sure that it clears. Once it clears, we should be done with the rear tire. All right, guys, well, here's the first official look at a full rolling chassis now that that rear tire is 100% complete. I did go ahead and throw in the kickstand, that way we could see it all standing up on its own two wheels, and it does not disappoint. Now, one thing that I did find right away was this rear shock. It is not strong enough to be able to handle this suspension, and as you can see, it's very sloppy and all over the place. Let me just adjust it, that way this thing doesn't fall over. So what my plan is, will be to take the old spring itself. I've already disassembled this thing. This shock, well, it's a goner. <laughs> so I'm gonna end up taking that, that one apart, uh, taking that spring off and putting this spring after I strip and paint it back on. That way we can check another thing off the list before moving towards putting all the controls, all the wiring, finishing up the motor. We just, we got a lot to do. So <laughs> let's get that checked off our list next. Real quick, I do want to do a comparison of the two shocks and springs. On this side, you can see both springs are next to each other, and the one that came off the dirt bike is much heavier duty. It's a lot thicker, as you can see. That's going to be the support we were looking for. Now, when it comes to the shocks, the one we ordered is about a half an inch longer, uh, but as far as the, the brace point and the top, it's the exact same length. So we'll have the exact same travel distance and compression on the spring. The only difference is going to be the mount holes. I think we're going to be okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish getting this thing cleaned up and painted and get this spring and shock reassembled. All right, let's get it painted. All right, the old spring is out, the new spring is on. It did take some damage when compressing the spring and putting it on the shock. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this up and actually paint it all black. I think that's gonna look the best. It's gonna have a nice, clean, clear coat on it before we go ahead and put it back on the dirt bike. Now, in this time lapse, I also got the new brake hub in, so I'm gonna be reassembling that on the front wheel, getting all this put back together to that rolling chassis that we just had a minute ago. So the disc lined up perfectly. We are done with that. Now, while we're literally waiting for paint to dry, I'm going to be efficient and start putting on the front controls. Now, a lot in this time lapse is going to happen. I'm going to get on the clutch lever and the brake lever with this booster. I'm going to bleed the brakes with some DOT4. You've got your uh, clutch cable and your brake 
hydraulic line, also your throttle cable, the throttle and the grip. So I wanna complete this front end right now. Now for starters, I did get a little carried away on that time lapse. I started adding a few more things, but hey, let's talk about them right now. For starters, that front brake is done. As you can see, the tire spins and it stops because all the air has been bled. We're good to go there. I did put on the throttle and the throttle cable itself. No issues, it went on as it should. Same thing with the carburetor and the air filter. All that is 100% good to go. Now we did have one small issue with this clutch cable. As you can see, I've let out as much line as I can. That way we have as little slack as possible. However, it's still not enough. We've got about a half an inch of play still and that's just not gonna work for us. It does still engage and disengage, but I'm gonna want that completely taken out. So we'll address that here in a little bit, but for now I'm gonna continue through the process. And lastly, I did go ahead and throw on the fuel tank and the fuel lines, that way we could just be done with all this front end systems and 100% move towards the rear. Now that this shock is all dry, we're gonna throw that back in, put the tire back on, that way we can finish up the chain, finish up the brakes, and get this thing one step closer to riding. Man, I'm gonna tell you, we are one step closer to getting this thing wrapped up and I cannot be more excited. Now, for the rear end, uh, I did get those brakes on and bled. The rear tire is mounted and aligned. The chain is on. Also, I bought a chain guard. That way the chain doesn't rub on the rear powder coat. Um, but it needs a bolt to go in this frame and I really don't wanna screw into it. So I think what I'm gonna use is some double-sided sticky tape and hold that down. We'll see how long it lasts. Who knows, this chain could throw it right off. But for now, I'm just gonna try that. We did go ahead and cut up the side cover. It was rubbing quite a bit on the bottom of the chain of this bolt here. So I hacked the bolt, I cut this out and I shaved it all down and sanded it up so that way it fits just perfectly right where it needs to go. However, we are gonna need to repaint it. So while I'm repainting this and that's drying, let's move over to the electrical. Guys, now when it comes to electrical, because this thing is a kickstart with no lights or electricity, it's going to be extremely easy to put together. We've got a new stator. We're going to put that on. The stator has five wires. The yellow and white are both charge wires. We don't have a battery or a charging station. We're not going to use those. We just need these three. As far as the full harness, very simple. You've got the coil. You've got a kill switch. You've got a CDI box for spark. Then you also have this little two pin. I believe that's also for brakes. If you were to have a rear brake with a handle, we don't, so we won't be using it. And then the three lines for the stator. That's it. This is gonna be the easiest wiring I've ever done in my life. Let's get it put on the bike. All right guys, now the electrical is all buttoned up. I did check for spark and we're good to go there. Two small issues we have as far as the Kickstarter I ordered. Well, this mechanism goes up and down. I need it to go back and forth so it can kickstart and every time I kick it, it doesn't just slide off. So I haven't decided if I'm going to order a different one or just paint the old one. At this point, it's up in the air. Now, when it comes to exhaust, this exhaust was purchased by the previous owner who had this bike and it's not the exact fit. I pulled out the old exhaust and you can see it has this bend in it. That allows to clear the back plastic, which this one isn't doing. So I'll have to get this exhaust cleaned up and repowdered, get that back on and then get the plastics on. 
But for now, you guys, I'm really excited to hear this thing run, so let's throw some gas in it and see if we can't fire it up. Alright, different Kickstarter. It is leaking gas, so I'm not sure what we're gonna get out of this, but hey, we'll get it figured out. Obviously there's something going on because it's leaking a little bit of fuel over the overflow. I gotta get it adjusted right, so I'm gonna work on that and then get it back on the stand. Now it is another day here in the shop and what you just saw was our first attempt at getting it started and it, it needed some adjustments as far as the carburetor was concerned. So I worked on that. It is a cold bike. We're gonna go ahead and cold start it now before finishing up back on the table. We're gonna go uh, full choke, gas on. Alright, that's what we wanna see. Back on the table we go. Okay guys, now it's back on the table. Let's talk about this last time lapse you're about to see before this build is finished. Uh, the new Kickstarter is in, so we're gonna get that replaced, get the old one off, new one on. That chain cover is painted, so we're gonna throw that on, as well as the double-sided tape. I'm gonna go ahead and tape down that chain guard. We'll see how it goes, uh, but for right now, just to get it locked in, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go through the whole entire bike, front to back, checking every single nut and bolt, making sure they're all 100% secure, and then finally, we're going to throw on those beautiful plastics, take this thing down, and ride this sucker. So stick with me on the last time lapse, guys, and I promise you it is worth the wait. Let's go. That's a wrap for this video, guys. And as you can see, the results are on the table right behind me. We went with the black, the white, the red, and it all came together and it looks amazing. Now, we did have a lot of ups and downs along the way, a lot of which I gotta share with you on camera, but I wouldn't have changed it for the world that helped us learn and grow and made this project worth it once we finally got to the end. I wanna say thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up button and also subscribe to my channel. I do have a lot of future projects coming down the pipeline that I cannot wait to share with you. Now, before I get this thing sold, I am gonna have some fun and rip across the yard and uh, <laughs> just enjoy the fruits of my labor. Like always, guys, we will see you on the next one.
is hard, isn't it? Like it's got to be perfect. It's like the 50 tries. It's, pr it's probably 25 tries. <laughs> oh. That's a wrap for this video. Mm. All right, guys. Now that is a wrap. For nope. There we go. That's a good one, huh? Is that a good one? <laughs>